The second economic application of the implicit functional law is going to be national income model with general functions. Okay, again, let's start by reviewing what is due to the model. Again, we start with the equilibrium condition that we know. And now, aggregating expenditures are some of consumption, investment, government spend, where consumption is some function of disposable income. We do not know exactly why. How does it look like? Investment is some function of interest rate. Well, government spending is just government spending. Now, disposable income is defined in the same way as before, as a difference between income and taxation. However, taxation now is just some function of income. Again, we do not know how exactly it works. However, still, we got some additional information. Look, information we got is that the derivative of consumption with respect to disposable income, so marginal propensity to consume, is equal to, so we will be denoting it by C prime. This is marginal propensity to consume, so it must be between zero and one. Now, the second thing we know is that the higher the interest rate, the lower the interest rate. The higher the cost of obtaining capital for, to purchase investment goods, right? Okay, to obtain money to buy some investment goods. And because of that, we know it's negative, we will be denoting it as I prime. Finally, the last derivative that we've got over here is the derivative of taxation with respect to income. This is a tax rate, so it must be between 0 and 1. This is all we know. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Well, again, we start by creating an equation which is identically equal to 0. So we've got this time f, and we've got y, which is our energy variable, separating it by semicolon from I and G zero. This is equal, of course, if we take it from equilibrium condition to Y minus aggregated expenditures. Y minus aggregated expenditures is just Y minus C Y D minus I I minus G zero. It all equals to zero. Now. When can we use an implicit functional rule? Where does this function imply a function of equilibrium level of income? Of course, if f y is different than zero. Right? So, first thing we need to do is to calculate f y. And look, what does it mean is that we need to differentiate this equation, right, with respect to what? Well, the first component is Z, it's just one. In case of G0 and I, there is no income involved, right? So the only issue we might have over here is what is the derivative of this expression with respect to income? So look, what I want to know is what is the derivative of consumption with respect to income. And in order to find that out, I'm going to use the chain rule. Because look, with the chain rule, I can leave dc over here, dy over here. Now, I know that if income is changing, then disposable income is changing. If disposable income is changing, then consumption is changing. However, dyd, dc dyd, this is marginal propensity to consume. This is c prime. Now, the more uh, now what we need to do next is to find the derivative of disposable income. 
So the derivative of y minus t. Well, again, it starts with y, the derivative of y with respect to y, which is just 1. And the derivative of t with respect to y is t prime. And this is the derivative that we were looking for. So, over here, we're going to have minus c prime times 1 minus t prime. And look, we know that this is between 0 and 1, right? And we know that this is between 0 and 1. So, it means that 1 minus this must be between 0 and 1. And finally, if we multiply both of them, it will be between 0 and 1. Finally, because this is between 0 and 1, we know that the value of Fy will always be between 0 and 1. Because it's between 0 and 1, it can never be So now we know that this equation implies function of income as some function of interest rate and government spend. So now I can write F income, equilibrium level of income, I0, which is 0, which is equal to Y minus C minus i i minus g zero identically equal to zero. And look, now I can all I need to do is to calculate in this model appropriate derivatives. So I can always find derivatives with respect to those two exogenous variables. So let's just say we want to start with government spending. So I want to know what is the partial derivative of equilibrium level of income with respect to government spending, what do I need to do? Use the formula, right? On the bottom, I'm going to have Fy, right? So derivative of this with respect to y that we've got over there. And now, what I need to do is to calculate derivative of this with respect to g0. This one we've already calculated, so we get that this is negative 1 minus c prime, 1 minus t prime, and the derivative of this with respect to g0 is negative 1. Those two minuses cancel each other out. What do we get over here? This is a fiscal. Multiply. We know that this is between 0 and 1, so this expression must be bigger than 1. Okay, one last thing that we need to calculate is, of course, partial derivative with respect to interest rate. Okay, so now we want to know what is the partial derivative of equilibrium level of income with respect to the interest rate. So we will have minus F I F Y. Now, again, we know everything that is going on over here. Uh, so we've got in the bottom 1 minus C prime, 1 minus T prime. And now, derivative of this with respect to interest rate is simply i prime. Again, negative i prime. Now, those minuses cancel each other again. And now, because we know that this is between 0 and 1, and because we know that this expression over here is negative, we know uh, and we know that this comparative static derivative is actually negative. 
So, what we get from this is the higher the interest rate, other things being equal, the lower the equilibrium level of GDP. Okay, so this is it for now. Next week, we're going to extend the implicit function rule to the cases of simultaneous equations. See you next week.